Well, there's pomp, uh, procession and pageantry for the upcoming coronation of King Charles III. There is also so much more to the event that no one even knows about. Well, <laughs> almost no one, Let, and you're about to. Let's hope someone does. Yeah. Uh, our next guest is a British historian, author, presenter, who's been sharing the history of this once-in-a-lifetime event on social media. For instance, did you know what the oldest piece of memorabilia is or why King Charles will be hidden behind an embroidered screen for part of the ceremony? Well, we need to find out more. The clock is ticking. Alice Loxton joins us live from Buckingham Palace. Uh, good evening, good morning to you. Uh, you've been sharing some fun facts about the coronation online. Can we start with St Edward's crown? Because it's not something we're likely to see again for a while. That's right. Well, there's a few crowns at the uh, coronation ceremony, but perhaps the most important one is St. Edward's crown. And this is the crown that Charles will wear when he is crowned in that very moment. And it's the only time he'll ever wear it in his whole reign. So it really is a once in a reign opportunity. Uh, it's called St. Edward's crown, named after Edward the Confessor, the Anglo-Saxon king and saint. And apparently it's incredibly heavy. They compare it to, to having a big melon on your head, apparently. That's a kind of comparable weight <laughs> and it's got 444 gems and jewels and all sorts of symbols of royalty so it's quite something for Charles to wear. Yeah that's amazing. Now while some people know that a spoon will be the oldest piece of royal regalia used in the coronation not everyone knows why. So why? So there are quite a few objects that are used in the coronation ceremony and we call these the coronation regalia. Most of these were created in 1661 after lots of them were destroyed during the Commonwealth period, which is the period when we didn't have a monarchy. But there's one object which remarkably uh, survived and that is the coronation spoon. And we think perhaps at this point, you know, people kind of forgotten what it was for and so they just didn't bother destroying it. And so it was sold to a man called Clement Kinnersley and uh, he paid 16 shillings for it and then when the monarchy was restored he handed it back over and so that's why we still have the coronation spoon to this very day wow now, the cameras though when the spoon this very famous spoon gets used the cameras won't be allowed to film it why is that so it'd be used in the ceremony called the anointing and this is the most sacred part of uh, the ceremony and it's a, point, it's a part that is so sacred that we won't even be able to see it. The cameras won't be allowed to see the anointing taking place. Uh, it's really a private moment that happens behind a screen between the monarch and God. Uh, and what will happen is the holy oil taken from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem will be poured into the coronation spoon and the Archbishop of Canterbury will uh, anoint the king on his forehead, on his chest and on his hands. And so it's a really incredible kind of sacred moment. Wow. Um, now, coronations weren't always held at Westminster Abbey, of course. What, what made them choose to do it there? Well, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, coronations have happened uh, in the past. Before 1066, they might have happened wherever you fancied, perhaps Bath or Canterbury or Oxford. But since 1066, they've pretty much always happened at Westminster Abbey, which is the church of the Anglo-Saxon king, Edward the Confessor. He took a fancy to Westminster. Then it was a kind of, uh, you know, grassy, peaceful area outside of London. It's a bit different from that today, right in the heart of the seat of power. But uh, over the years, it's, um, you know, it's, it's become a coronation church in the 1300s, they really developed it as a custom-built space. So they put this incredible uh, mosaic floor in the Coronation Theatre, and they uh, they call that the Cosmati Pavement, which I think rather undersells it. And most pavements aren't quite that uh, <laughs> that glamorous, but uh, it's a pretty beautiful space. Wow. Now, when we see other people getting crowned, let's say call it Miss Universe, mm. there's always there's always a first runner-up, mm. and in this case, Camilla also gets a crown. So how will, how will that play out? Almost like a first runner-up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose so. I mean, Camilla, it, it is following a lot of tradition. There have been many queens, uh, you know, queen regnants in their own right, the likes of Elizabeth I or Queen Anne, and there have been many, many queen consorts too. So we've actually had 28 queen consorts crowned at Westminster Abbey, and Camilla will really be following along in those footsteps. There are going to be a few differences, though, so uh, they're going to be reusing a crown. Normally they kind of recreate a, a new crown for the occasion, but showing their recycling 
unlikely in credentials they're going to be using a crown from 1911 the crown of queen mary who was the the queen of george v and with the with camilla the anointing ceremony will actually be on screen so we'll be able to see that or at least it will be seen by people in the church um so you might be able to see the coronation spoon in action as a history buff this is going to be an incredible day what are you most looking forward to seeing from the coronation what, what can't we afford to miss well, I mean, one of the really brilliant, exciting things for historians is seeing the Stone of Destiny. And this is a stone which is really important for Scottish people, for Scottish monarchy, and it really stretches back many, many years. Uh, it's been quite controversial in the past. So I'll be excited to see that uh, temporarily in London. Um, but I think, you know, there have been so many things that have gone wrong in the past uh, at coronations. A Queen Victoria's coronation, an old man, uh, an elderly peer, fell down the steps and uh, quite remarkably his name was Lord Roll. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, perhaps we'll see some kind of, you know, and there's other occasions when the crown was put on the wrong way round. So, you know, we might see history in the making, mistakes in the making, if oh, you like. Wow. I'm there for the jewels. Larry's there for, for the Lord accidents. Roll. <laughs> Absolutely. Alice, you're so smart. If I'm ever on a quiz show, I want you as my phone a friend. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'd be delighted. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.